Okay, so if we know how to find our way to the desired directory in terminal, but what if we need to create a file or a subfolder in another directory? How can we do that? Well, first, let's open up our terminal. And by the way, another way that you can open terminal instead of right clicking and going open terminal here is going up here to this icon, which says terminal emulator and clicking on it. By default, this will be inside of your home directory, which we know to be this sign. And if we type the pwd command, we get slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. We know that our desktop directory is also inside of this directory, so let's go there. CD desktop, press enter, and now we are in the desktop directory. Let's get back to the files. To create a simple empty file, we can use a command called touch. If I simply just type touch file, and let's call it file1, press enter, this will create a file named file1, and it will have no contents inside of it. We can also see that file1 has been created, as it is right now on our desktop, since we created it inside of the slash desktop directory. And if we also type ls, we can see that the file is in our desktop directory. To make sure this file is indeed empty, we can use the command cat, and this command once executed on a file, writes out all the contents that are inside of that file. Let's try it out. So we specify cat and then file1, press enter, and this will give no result since, as we already mentioned, the touch command creates empty files. If we want to, for example, put something inside of that file, we can use a command echo. You simply just type it like this, echo, and to put something, you specify after the echo, let's say today is a really good day. So we specified an entire sentence, and all we need to do to put this sentence inside of this file is to specify this arrow to the right. And after it, specify the name of the file that we want to put this sentence in. So echo, today is a really good day, into the file one. Press enter. And if we cat it once again with the cat command, so cat file one, we will see that now it outputs exactly what we've written to that file using the echo command. Okay, that's all good, but there is an easier way and more practical way to do all of this. We can use a text editor to write things inside of a file. And an easy text editor that we can run from terminal is called nano. So let's try to do the same thing we just did using nano. If we type nano, and after nano comes the name of the file that you want to edit, and since we want to edit a new file that we haven't created yet, we can simply just type name, let's call it file2, and press enter. This will open this empty window where we can type anything we want. We can type file content here, and it can be anything. We can type, for example, text here, but we could also type code if we wanted to. Let's start with text first. Let's write just hello world as a text. To save this, we press Ctrl O together, then enter to save under this name, and then Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. If we now type cat and then file2, and by the way, we can notice that file2 has been created along file1 on our desktop. But if we cat file2, we can see the output of hello world. So we managed to do it only using one tool, which is nano, instead of using two tools, which are touch and echo. But I also mentioned we can do the same thing with programs. For example, how can we create a Python program using nano and terminal? First, we need to open a file. So let's type nano and then file3.py. And in this case, we add .py because that is an extension for Python programs. Then inside of it, after pressing enter, we're going to run a simple command, which is print and then hello 
world between the quotes. And you will see that some stuff changes colors. This is because the nano editor recognizes this as a Python program. What we did right here, in case you're not familiar with Python, is we just ran a simple function that will print out the string that is in between the quotes. So this will just print out hello world. Let's save it with Ctrl O, then press Enter, and then Ctrl X to exit. And luckily for us, Python is already installed in Cal Linux. So all we need to do to run this program is to type python3 and then the name of the file. file3.py. Press Enter and the program will execute. Here it printed out hello world. Cool, right? You will also notice that the icon is different than these two icons. This is also once again because this is recognized as a Python program. It even has the Python icon. Now that we know how to create files and execute Python programs, the next question would be how can we create directories? To create a directory, we can use the command mkdir, which stands for make directory. To check it out, let us run mkdir and name a directory folder. So press enter, and if I type ls, we will see that we got our files as well as a directory which is different color, and it is called folder. Remember, we differentiate them by color, and also if we try to change directory to the folder, it will work. It will even give us the path of slash desktop slash folder. Great. In that folder, you can do pretty much anything you want. You can create subfolders or create files. Whatever you want to do, you can. To move, for example, our Python program from the desktop directory to our folder directory, we can use command mv, which stands for move. We must first navigate back to desktop directory, so let's do it using cd and then two dots to go one directory back. And from it, we run the command mv file3.py into the folder. So we specify move, then the second parameter is what we want to move, which in our case is file3.py, and the last parameter is where we want to move it. We want to move it inside of our folder. So press here enter, and you will notice that the file3.py disappeared from our desktop directory. We can also check that by typing ls, and notice that our Python program is no longer here. But if we go to the folder directory, and type ls here, we will see it here because we moved it. Here it is, file3.py. Now, this is a handy command and you will use it a lot. Besides moving the file, we also want to see how we can copy a file and we can do it using the cp command. This does the exact same thing as move command, but it doesn't move it from original directory to desired directory, it just copies it. So let's try to copy file3.py and call it file4.py. If I type cp, which stands for copy, file3.py, and I type file4.py right after it, this will create an exact copy of our file in the same directory. If I press enter and type ls, here it is. We got file3.py and file4.py. If we want to change whether they are exactly the same, we can cat the content of file3.py and cat the content of file4.py. And we can see they're both the same Python programs. And last command that we want to cover regarding files is the command rm. This command deletes files and directories, and let's say we try to delete file4.py, that is our copy of our Python program. We can do it by typing rm and then file4.py. Now, be careful with this command, since once you delete a file, there is no trash bin where you can retrieve it, it is gone. If I type enter and type ls, you will see our file4.py is no longer there. Okay, but how do we delete a directory? Let's first create a directory inside of our folder directory, and to do that, we type mkdir, and let's call it folder2. Folder2 is a subdirectory of our folder. 
if I type ls, here it is. And let's say we did create this directory by mistake and we want to delete it. Can we use rm folder2? Well, we can try it. Hmm, cannot remove folder2 and it will tell us that it is a directory. So how do we delete it? Well, we'll remove it in the same way we remove files, we just add an option at the end of the command. So type rm folder2 and then at the end add space and then dash r. Press enter and this will delete our directory. Also, double check what you are deleting with this command since if you go to our slash directory, which is directory containing all folders and files in system, and if we were to type, for example, in that directory rm, then this star sign and then dash r, this command would delete entire Cal Linux machine with all of its files. So always pay attention what exactly are you deleting in Linux and from which directory are you deleting. Since inside of the Linux you will not be stopped in deleting anything you want. You can easily delete a crucial file for the operating system and make your Cal Linux machine unworkable. That is also a reason why we are practicing with virtual machine. So let's Oops, I actually ran this and you will notice that the results of this command, if I type ls, now our folder is completely empty. So I actually ran this by mistake and keep in mind if I actually ran this from the slash directory, which is our root directory, I would delete entire Cal Linux system. For now on, it is good since I only deleted our Python program, so it is not a big deal. Okay, great. We learned a bunch of the commands in this lecture. Now I got a practice test for you that you can try to do for the next lecture. Inside of our folder directory, since I deleted my Python program, I want you to create the file tree.py once again. You can type anything you want inside of it. You can use the print hello world statement that we used. And what I want you to do, using the commands you learned in this video, is to copy that file in the desktop directory from our folder directory. So you create it inside of this directory, and I want you to copy it back to the desktop directory. A hint is that it can be a little tricky once you copy file from some directory to directory. Anyways, just try it and we're going to see the solution in the next video.